Okay, folks, just a few things before I get started here. I want to make sure you understand this is not an all-encompassing walkthrough video. It will give you a good high-level overview, I think, of the process that I went through to install a third air conditioner on a uh, 2017 Sandpiper uh, 381 RBOK. Uh, uh, much respect and thanks to uh, the people at the Forest River uh, forums, uh, Sandpiper thread there. Uh, Head Games, uh, Chop, and uh, Brad, and everyone else who've uh, kind of went through this process uh, uh, and have uh, provided some parts lists and a walkthrough of their process. So uh, visit there for a lot more supplemental information. This is uh, just my way of kind of paying it forward a little bit and helping to supplement some of the information that they provided. Obviously, I'm not a uh, professional video and audio guy, so... Uh, uh, no critiques of uh, the quality you see here. All right, my first step here, I took the cover off the AC unit. There were six screws holding on. A couple of them were behind the little covers. You had to pry off. But once I got in here, I see that the comm cable coming off of here, which I'm going to have to connect another comm cable to, and run it from the master bed to the uh, front or back, however you look at it, uh, to the bunk house. There's a extra connection right here so that's where the comm cable will connect between these ACs for the multi-zone but I see that that's run towards the door side of the camper so what I did was pull this light out I'll run the comm through that existing hole it looks like believe it or not that comm cable actually comes all the way through here so if I wanted to I could even just connect to that and run a wire and pull it through but i'll just fish that through that should then give me a straight run with the cat 5 to each of the lights down the hall and i haven't decided yet i gotta get power from the bunkhouse down to the uh essentially the stairwell down here where the uh circuits are the circuit breakers so I'll probably run the power along that same run. I don't know if I'll bring it all the way to this light. And then I'm going to shoot it across to this panel to get it down to the basement where I can hook it up into the circuit. So we'll see once I get this panel off and uh, see how the run looks going uh, through the lights. All right, so this quickly turned into a pain in the rear, but I was able to get her get her done. So. What I did was uh, I fished the Cat 5 uh, back. Well, I got it into the AC and into my holes, my light hole over here. So this here is a, was a light. Here's a speaker. This was the antenna right here. And uh, essentially I had to take all of them out to try and get that Cat 5 line run from that little hole. It was a slight challenge because there's all kinds of support beams and wood up here. So I kept getting hung up and essentially all I could do was get it to run over here to this antenna line. I could not get an angle to get it over here. So uh, once I got the fish tape into this hole, I was then easily able to get it over here and uh, pull it back through. So now I've got my uh, Romex, my uh, Cat5. In that light, I've got the sockets out all the way across to the uh, bunkhouse. Hopefully it'll be a straight shot and a little bit easier now uh, to get across. We'll see. Uh, the 12-2 uh, is run from this hole. I ran it over here. Uh, I had to uh, jump it across to this light. And then uh, from there, I was able to get it in here, as you can see into that hole and bring it down. Right now I've just got the wire, uh, hopefully enough, set there. I'll run it down into the basement and, uh, and hook it up into uh, the panel. So for now, pretty much done here. I can uh, I'll probably wait to put the ends on until uh, everything's done, but uh, I've got at least the wire in the master bedroom finished and ready to run wire to the back. All right, so having a heck of a time getting it from the front to the back. 
So uh, I couldn't get it to fish straight from the master bed, even to this first socket. There's something uh, up above here that's blocking. So what I did was came into the bathroom and uh, was able to get through from there. So now I'm gonna go ahead and pull that through. Should be able to then get here, which I've got uh, one glow rod in there already going to the next socket but then i've got an issue in that i can't i don't know if i'm hitting duct work with the air conditioner but i cannot get from this light to the next i seem to be able to get across so i'm going to try and uh, remove the ceiling fan and see if i can't uh, get in there and figure out a way around it all right, now I've got everything finally when I went through the bedroom into the hall and then I had a straight shot. I was able to make it into uh, this light socket, but again, I'm still stuck. I don't know if it's the AC or uh, what is blocking me getting across to this light. So I think I'm going to take out the ceiling fan and I'll uh, see if I can jog back and forth into uh, these last couple of light sockets. I might end up having to run over here to the other side and uh, go across, which would be just fine. And then I'll come through into the master bedroom, connect into one of these lights here, and uh, pull that vent out and hopefully be able to put an AC in. All right, so after a few breaks uh, to deal with my sanity, what I ended up doing, got the wire still here, took the ceiling fan out, that was a no-go with the, the uh, junction box in there. Took this down thinking maybe there'd be some nice big holes in there to try and get through. That was a no-go, small holes, but was still open as an opportunity if I uh, decided to put a big hole in. At least it would be covered up by that wood. But after several attempts we we're finally able to get the glow rod through there there's just so much duct work and wood everywhere and i just could not get the right angle to get that fish tape through we were banging up against we were able to get it going from here right to here and then hitting the wood and i couldn't get it under there uh finally was able to use this tool was able to uh, get that up into the hole, hooked the uh, fish tape just to bring it down under that wood just enough so that I could uh, pull it through. So now that I'm there, uh, instead of plan A, which was running the cable on this side and going across, which actually would have been a little bit of a challenge with the cabinets there, I'm going to bring it across. So I've got the wire coming out here now I'm going to bring it across over to this light and I'm going to run it down this line so I got to take out these uh, couple lights and uh, I'm hoping those will be easy runs now get through this wall which might be a challenge we'll see get there and then we'll bring it through this light and then I'll be set for the air conditioner so we'll uh, hopefully see uh, here in a few minutes that that worked all right Ended up getting it all the way through. Went uh, from that light to that light. I actually tried to pull the uh, stereo speaker out, but didn't need to. Uh, ended up, it was just a pretty clear run from here. So uh, went from that light to this one. And uh, so you can see it up in there and out here. I've got plenty of, plenty of wire left over. So I think that's gonna be it for today. And then we'll uh, tackle the rest. All right, so now I'm in the underbelly in the uh, basement here. And uh, just cleared out a little area. Uh, you can see here, taking the screws out on the back wall or the front wall and taking that panel off already. There was only three screws holding that panel on. So I've got the screws out on this panel. I'll pull that one out as well. Should expose a bunch of the underside that uh, will allow me to get to the wire from the master bedroom that I'm running down. And I'll hook it into the fuse panel. This is 
what it looks like with that panel removed. You see the inverter and all the guts, hot water heater, furnace, and so on. And right here is where I'm gonna send the wire down that uh, I ran from the master bedroom. We'll come out through that hole there and uh, be a piece of cake then to run it over here to the back side to the circuit panel, which is back in here. So we'll uh, start getting that run now. I think that wire will be coming out here in a second. Okay, so here in the underbelly, so you can see I've got the Romex coming down, coiled up here, ready to go. I'm gonna run it back here to the fuse panel. That's the back side, side of the panel. I'm not exactly sure looks to me like the best way it looks like it comes out from the staircase so you know, there's a few screws there so we'll go look at that and uh, we'll feed this thing through and uh, hopefully be able to hook it up to the new breaker all right so I got the uh, panel off you can see here if you open it up there's uh, just four screws that hold that in so uh, the cover comes off for me uh, yeah, everyone's panel will probably be a little different but uh, in my case I am going to uh, there's only one breaker here that's not a, a dual pole so that's the top one so I'm going to take that replace it with a 15 and a 20 so uh, we'll hook the AC up to the 20 hook the uh, refrigerator back up to the 15 so we'll replace that top one and uh, we'll feed it through uh, one of these holes here uh, I might poke a new one it should be able to get it through no problem and we'll have power all right I kind of forgot to videotape doing this but uh, just to give you an idea what I did I uh, replaced replaced the top breaker which was a uh, single breaker single 15 amp for the refrigerator replace that with this dual pole that uh, has the 15 and the 20. So uh, I've got the bunk AC now and the refrigerator on there. And that was all she wrote for availability of breakers. So, uh, you know, I fed that through the basement and through the back, you had to remove this entire panel, uh, four screws, uh, pretty easy overall. Just feed it through one of the open holes and uh, replace that breaker. Now, sorry folks, but uh, this process uh, turned into a two-person job about this point, so uh, I didn't get as much of the recording as I would have liked. I didn't record any of the process from up top of the camper, uh, setting the actual condenser on, which was actually a piece of cake once you could get the 75-pound unit on top of the camper. Uh, but here from the inside, I'm going to show you uh, essentially just cutting holes where the existing air vent was. Uh, into the duct uh, should give you at least a high level overview of how we w how we did it uh, cutting the hole and then taping it up I ended up with a lot more tape than you're gonna see here uh, essentially the whole box was taped up and sealed as uh, good as possible bunch of patchwork tape and we'll seal it up good and make sure that you know, see a little gap right here and all that's for the most part sealed but I'm gonna make sure it's extra sealed okay, so here's the inside unit I attached control system here just two screws the holes to put them in are kind of hidden under that paper so uh, once we got that uh, We'll get it put up there. All right, one quick thing to note here is that uh, I actually took that uh, control board off that needs to be off to install the air diverter inside there. So uh, that was off, uh, installed the diverter, got everything uh, bolted down, sealed up, and then uh, installed that control board back inside there. Uh, once that was done, essentially it was uh, ready to get fired. Just tighten up the bolts here, sent those through, get the wiring hooked up. 
we'll have a little deflector separator we'll get put in there this here is the freeze sensor going up into the fins and once it's all cinched down we'll seal everything up and then the last piece that uh, I did not record I struggled a little bit with this but once everything was plugged in hooked up ready to go you have to go to the main thermostat and reinitialize it uh, to do that uh, essentially you hold the zone and the mode buttons uh, while the thermostat is turned off you hold those two buttons and press the power button it uh, will fire up the LCD will come on and it will say INIT for initializing and it should show all three units it should recognize all three if you don't go through that step it will not recognize the third air conditioner I will tell you from uh, uh, experience so Make sure you go through the initialization. Uh, once it comes up and shows zones one, two, and three, you hit the power button again to turn it off, and then when you fire it back on, you should have access to all three zones.